Hello, this is Matthew. I am back in the garden and I had been getting some questions about my mushroom patch. So I thought I'd go over how I started it, how I keep it up, and what it's doing. And so here we go. The mushroom patch is actually in the back of the garden, uh, underneath the oak tree, because this is the spot that gets the most shade. Uh, it's light right here in the morning, but for most of the day, we don't have much of anything, or we have a lot of shade. So, oh, what you'll see is that I've got two two by two mushroom patches here. I cover them up with uh, coffee bean uh, um, canvas that I picked up at a local coffee roaster. Uh, they actually had a pile of them out back for free. You can see that the oyster mushrooms on this side are having a good flush going on right now. The other side is wine cap mushrooms and uh, they have not given a flush yet but if we dig down in here you can actually see all that white stuff down in there. That is mycelium and it's all the way through this. There's actually a really good caking of it all the way through and so as that eats through the straw and uh, gets to a point where it's happy and ready to go, it will give me a flush of wine cap mushrooms over here and I've got a flush of oysters over here. Now the oyster mushrooms actually started out as a mushroom grow kit. I've actually gotten several of the Back to Roots mushroom grow kits. Um, I have a pink oyster mushroom one I haven't started yet. Uh, something to note about these, the first one I got because I wanted to start this kind of cheaply was a mini grow kit. And then I got two of these larger full size grow kits and it turns out that the price difference is not worth it. Uh, the amount of mushroom spawn in them is exactly the same in the mini and the large one. The difference is that you get basically a little spray bottle that isn't worth the price difference. So I started out growing the mushroom kit indoors, just following the directions, and got a great flush of mushrooms from that. And then when I was done, I took the remainder of the mushroom spawn that had been used once and I brought it out and made these little two by two mushroom gardens. Now the mushroom gardens are really simply made. I went to a big box store and I picked up these uh, uh, concrete blocks that you can use for making quick garden stuff and some, uh, I think these are two by sixes and uh, just got uh, a couple eight foot lengths of, of two by sixes and cut them up and put this together literally in about 10 minutes. Um, then you can see that they're filled with straw. I got just a regular block of uh, straw from I think it was TSC. I'm pretty sure you can get that from uh, most big box stores, most garden centers. Um, I made sure to not get one that was uh, filled with gum arabic or anything to keep it sticky because uh, I wasn't sure how that was going to interact with the mushroom. So it's just basic straw. Put it in. I made sure to tap it down a little bit to make sure there was good contact uh, across. And when I was putting it in, what I ended up doing was layering. I put First I put down a layer of straw, then I crumbled up a mushroom spawn, and then put another layer of straw, another layer of mushroom spawn, so on, and basically did a lasagna uh, throughout the substrate. Then watered it. Uh, you keep it watered about the same as you keep the rest of the garden watered, uh, about an inch of inch, inch and a half of water a week. What I ended up doing is, because I keep it covered and it doesn't get a lot of sun, I will come and see whether or not the, the, the top layer 
is can be a little bit dried out, but really underneath, if it's moist, you're good. And if you keep it, uh, you know, reasonably moist, not wet, uh, eventually you will get little pins, little bits of mushroom coming up and they will turn into full flushes of mushroom. This is actually our second flush of mushroom from the kit out here. And then I had the one flush inside. So this has already given me uh, three sets of really good oyster mushrooms. I haven't quite got uh, any mushrooms out of the wine cap mushrooms yet, but I expect that'll happen fairly soon since you saw how much the uh, substrate is, is filled with mycelium. You can see the same thing here. If we dig down a little bit, there's that nice white mycelium all the way through the uh, uh, straw. When you pick the oyster mushrooms, they're, they're beautiful. They're nice big chunks of mushroom going on. I mean, this is larger than my hand. Uh, Honestly, it's probably about the size of my head, um, and there are several more here. Uh, one thing to note is that there's these little bits at the bottom that uh, of basically the, the little bit of mushroom. You want to pick that off and then bury it back into the moist straw, because that will, again, start growing uh, and spread that mycelium and uh, really keep your, your mushroom patch going. Now I've picked uh, a bunch of these and you can see I've left some to grow a little more but where I picked there's still a lot of mycelium a, a, a lot of really good going and I took the little bits and I moved them over here and I buried them down so that again it can feed back into the system those will grow they'll uh, uh, keep producing more mushrooms, keep the mycelium healthy. And yeah, the other thing is when the mushrooms begin to flush, I have a tendency to uh, not put the, um, uh, the burlap back over them just to give them a little bit of room to breathe. But otherwise, I leave that burlap on to help keep the moisture in. Sometimes I'll wet it down a little bit also. So that's it. That's pretty much what I did and how I keep it going. Doesn't take up a lot of room. It's four foot by two foot underneath a tree in the back of my yard. And uh, yeah, it's been great.